Thanks. So this talk is going to be about um, search and logging, um, which both sound kind of like things that everyone should know about. Logging sounds spectacularly boring. Hopefully, I'll convince you that it's actually not and that they're both actually incredibly useful things to, to think about. So I am uh, one of the founders of Logly. We do uh, logging as a service. So you ship us your logs, we aggregate them, we build search indexes out of them, and we let you get to them. Um, if you're familiar with the new Relic interface, we kind of look like that for logs. Um, we do graphing, we do uh, drill downs, we do um, full-blown search on your logs. Um, we have um, taken the as-a-service thing to heart. Um, as you'll see as I, I kind of go through the talk, I've had to deal with a lot of logs in dealing with um, search systems, and I've been working on search systems for a long time. Um, and it's one of the biggest frustrations of my life was dealing with log files that evaporated when a machine disappeared, for example. So the, the as-a-service part of what we do is incredibly important. We want to be 100% reliable. It's incredibly important, particularly now, particularly when, when people are using EC2 and machines come and go and disks come and go and all sorts of services come and go. The fact that they're all in one place is incredibly important. So I have some biases. Um, this talk is going to be talking a lot about Lucene. Um, it's a bias uh, that, you know, I'm totally happy about. Lucene is a great product. Um, Solar and Elasticsearch that are built on top of it are both great products as well. So, um, but the fundamental thing that they're built on, Lucene, is just I think one of the greatest pieces of software written in the last decade or so. So Java, not going to talk too much about that other than that, you know, if I talk about any examples of how to do logging, it's probably going to be from a Java bias, talking about log4j, that kind of thing. Um, Unix, distributed, real time. Um, don't have a lot of Windows experience, don't want to. It, it's a bias. Um, and the last part there, the measure, measure, measure. Um, if you work on search engines, there's really only one thing that you get measured by, and that's performance. Um, everything else is kind of secondary. So relevance is incredibly important, but if it takes you 20 seconds to figure out what the most relevant thing is, everyone's gone. So performance is all about measuring. Everyone here presumably is using New Relic. Holy shit. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so the entire company just showed up. Um, <coughs> so when you're trying to make sure that your search engine is working, you need to measure everything. And you need to measure it in smart ways. And I'll get onto some of those things coming up. <coughs> so what do you think you know about search and logging? Let's do search. It's about finding stuff fast. Google has taught people that you can find anything you want very, very quickly. Um, but typically, particularly with Google, for example, it's find the most relevant thing. If I search for the Grand Hyatt and I'm somewhere in San Francisco, it'll give me this Grand Hyatt, right? Um, it works. It's brilliant. It is incredibly valuable. But that's not all that search is. Search as a technology is not just finding the best thing. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on under the covers in search that let us do a whole lot of much more interesting things, and I'll get to that. But these are just kind of the examples of where you find search, and it's kind of everywhere these days. So if you think search is just finding something, if you think it's just finding that one thing or those 10 things that you really want to look at, then you're right, but you're misunderestimating search by a couple of orders of magnitude. Logs are a pain in the ass. They are everywhere. They are usually written by the wrong people for the wrong purpose. They're usually in an unbelievably chaotic state in terms of structure. They are just a mess. And anyone, you don't even have to look at these logs to know that they're a mess, right? You've seen these logs before. They're a disaster zone. So 
If that's what you think logs are, hopefully I'll change your mind about that by the end of the end of the talk. So this is kind of my story of working in search and some of the frustrations and some of the joys of doing that for 15 years. <clears throat> when long time ago, when I started in search, I was at a company called LookSmart, which was kind of like a mini Yahoo. We had a directory. We had we built up over time to. Um, have a web scale search engine. We were going to take on Google, or at that time probably AltaVista. Um, but it was it was you know a very fast growing, very challenging um, environment to build search engines in. And there weren't a lot of search engines around at the time that you could just kind of take off the shelf and use. So we wrote a lot of our own. Um, we wrote them in C and C plus plus generally. Um, and we had some very, very big teams working on it. And one of the things that kind of became obvious to me about this was, if you want to write your own search engine, you better be prepared to spend a shit ton of money because you need big teams. You need big teams just to write the engine. You need a big team to deal with relevance. You need a big team to make it operationally stable. All of those things cost serious, serious money. Um, we used fast because we looked at what we were going to need to do um, and decided we didn't want to spend that much money again. So we thought, well, we'll get fast. It's a search server that we can use. We know we can configure it. We know we can solve a whole bunch of problems with it. So we started using it. It shrank the development team for the engine, but it didn't really shrink any of the other teams because all of that other stuff still needed to happen. So it's just a very expensive thing to do to write your own search engine. It's huge fun. I mean, it is just incredibly fun, but not easy. Oh, and I should apologize. I've got a terrible cold, so um, I'm going to, yeah. <laughs> um, so in the search engines that I worked on in LookSmart, there was a big, big um, focus on relevance. And relevance is one of those things that is very hard to get right, and it's very, very hard to get better at. Um, and the only way to get better at it is to be, as I said in one of the earlier slides, measuring and measuring and measuring, looking at the results, looking at the click-through patterns, all of those kind of things to tell you, did you get the right thing at the top of the page? Because if everyone's clicking on the third link, then you didn't. So your relevance is broken. You need to fix it. So. Um, we had a lot of people who spent a lot of time analyzing click streams and feeding that back into the engineering team so that we could work on the relevance. And those guys had to figure out how they could take what in those days actually was a, <laughs> these days, pretty pitiful amount of um, metadata about each document and try and figure out how to boost the relevance to get um, people to click on the first thing, not the third thing. Um, and LookSmart was particularly fun because we had paid content which needed to be boosted so that we got paid. Um, so you can imagine the kind of hoops we had to jump through with relevance when you're dealing with that kind of thing. All of these systems, all, every single one of them um, involved tons of plumbing. And by plumbing, what I mean is you know, the kind of system level stuff so that the right data is on the right box, and you know that it's on that box, and you know how to get to it, and you know how to you know, update it and do all of these things, and do it all without downtime, which is um, kind of a challenge. The question from Hal. So search is really good at finding one thing and 10 things and 100 things. It sucks at finding 100,000. Um, it really does. It um, is just a fundamental constraint of the way that um, the way that scored results are handled by search. So if you want 100,000 results, you have to build a um, priority queue in RAM to fit 100,000 things and then stream the data through that to get those top 100,000. And then once you've found them, which can take a while if you don't run out of RAM, um, you have to stream them off disk, um, generally from a format that was never designed to be streamed off disk. So I used to get this question a lot. It's like, can I get 100,000 results? And it drove me insane. And the reason that people wanted that 
was because they wanted to do some analysis on the results. They wanted to take a look and see what, you know, what URLs they were coming from, all sorts of different kinds of analysis. And um, every company I've worked at on search, I've sent an email saying search engines are not for data mining. You can't treat them like you would treat a database. You cannot pull out 100,000 or a million or 10 million events and take them somewhere else and do some analysis on them, right? It's just not feasible. If you want to do that, stick them somewhere else. Don't stick them in search. So um, the, other, the last thing to say about this is there was a lot of pain and suffering related to the plumbing because um, you needed to know what was happening, right? And so generally the way we figured out what was happening was through logging and through a whole bunch of junk code that did stuff like rsyncing and gripping and perling and orking and generating flat files just to do the kinds of analysis I was talking about before, the measure, measure, measure stuff. So, you know, these two things, the question from hell and the pain and suffering are pretty consistent across every system I've worked on. That it, they're always hard. So to answer the question of what is happening, um, you need to do, you need three things. You need troubleshooting, monitoring, and analytics. Everyone in here should know what all of those things are, so I don't think that there's much, you know, you can read. Um, there is no one answer to this, right? There certainly wasn't then. We think we have something that comes close, but there is no one true way. But the one thing to take out of this slide is the last line. If you don't do this, you will fail. I mean, you have no other option than to fail if you don't get a good handle on this stuff. So at the end of that cycle, what did I know? I knew search was hard when you do it yourself. I've already talked about that. Distributed systems are very, very complicated. They're, not, they're no simpler these days than they were then. It's just that these days, someone else has written them for you and they've usually written them in a way that makes them fairly easy to understand, but the same problems still exist. Um, so when you're dealing with distributed systems, you should expect to suffer some pain. Um, here are some of the examples of that at LookSmart, but basically any big distributed system you work on is gonna have similar kinds of problems. And the last line, the troubleshooting, monitoring, analytics is simply not negotiable. I just said that in the previous slide, but I'll say it again. You can't build these systems without dealing with that problem. So then, Luc Oop, where am I? Yeah. So then Lucene showed up um, at LookSmart around 2004. Um, I was working on a, anyone here remember Furl? It was kind of like delicious. There you go. So it was, an, it was a pretty small system, obviously. Um, it had, um, the nice thing about Furl was because it was a small system, a lot of the problems that we'd had with our huge search systems, and by huge, I mean, you know, 900 machines um, running in the search cluster. Um, it dealt with a lot of those problems more simply. It was, you know, it divided uh, resources up by customers and moved customers around and things like that. But the, each individual slice of the, of the customer base was actually fairly small and consistent. So it was actually pretty straightforward. Um, and that was a big win. Um, it meant that we didn't have to, for example, in the 900 node cluster, if you sent a search request in, you didn't necessarily know which of those 900 machines was going to actually service it. Um, and you therefore needed to be monitoring all of them all the time. So for, as, at least as far as search is concerned here, it was a lot simpler because you knew that if customer X um, searched for something, it was going to be on that machine or that small number of machines. So um, yeah, not much else to say. Oh, bottom line. Um, so while doing all of this, um, it occurred to me that the thing that I really wanted, the troubleshooting, monitoring, analytics, could potentially be done by Lucene. I was working on Lucene. It was a library. It was easy to use. It was fast and simple. It occurred to me that I could use it, but it turns out I couldn't because 
um, at that stage it was just too immature, it was too, too clunky to use, you couldn't do anything even remotely like real-time updates and the numeric support just sucked, flat out sucked. So you couldn't do anything with the data other than count. From there I moved to Technorati where we were working on a blog search engine. This one was um, a lot of fun, primarily because um, it was real time. Um, now, it wasn't really real time, it was just that the data was coming in in real time and in most of the LookSmart systems it was kind of a batch process. You built an index once a week or once a month or in Phil's case probably once every half hour but it was still a batch process. You had some database sitting there with the data and you did a select and you got the data and you built it. With Technorati, instead of that we just had a live stream of data um, and that made some things a lot easier, some things a little harder but what it primarily meant was that we could build indexes in pretty close to real time. Um, we couldn't publish them in real time because of the constraints of Lucene, but we got down to like sub minute and I think in testing we were probably down around 30 seconds or so. So that was a nice kind of um, boost to me. It, it felt like the right way to be building things. It felt like I don't want to be constrained by the fact that I have to go to some other system and get this huge, in those days probably hundreds of megabytes of data, um, these days terabytes, right? I didn't want to do that. I just wanted the data coming to me all the time as it happened. Um, so that was a big um, sort of influence in how I've looked at search particularly in that because you can stream straight into it, um, you don't need all of that other stuff, right? Um, the other thing to say here is that Lucene itself has no idea what you're giving it in the sense that there is no schema. You can give it whatever you like. You can structure your documents however you like. You are not tied to the schema that someone invented three years ago for the MySQL database. You can denormalize, you can completely change it, you can add new data. And you can do that on like subs like every single event can be completely different, right? So that combined with streaming meant that we had this technology that let us um, essentially index anything in something like real time, even though we couldn't publish it in real time, but we could index it in real time. Um, and that let us do a whole bunch of things at Technorati that we couldn't do otherwise, or, we, or that I'd never been able to do up till that point. Um, one of the nice things that we did at Technorati that was kind of proof of you don't need a database was there's this concept of authority and what authority is with blogs is how many people are linking to you, right? So what we did at Technorati was we streamed all links from all blogs. Um, we streamed the link itself, so the link to whatever, to whatever it was that you, <coughs> you posted, your blog post, and we streamed um, where that link came from, so the URL of the originator of that link. And we just indexed it, right? Um, and then to figure out your authority, we just did a count of the number of um, URLs that were to your blog post, right? Now that seems incredibly simple these days. Um, in those days, um, at Technorati, it was not simple at all um, in the sense that we had, I think we had somewhere like, something like 150 MySQL servers, um, federated, sharded, you name it. It was a massive, massive MySQL cluster simply to compute this number. Well, not quite. but. It, one of its jobs was to compute this number and we used to update it once a day um, and kind of publish your authority to another table in the database. By doing this streaming indexing, we had it in real time and we did it on two machines. Admittedly, they were slightly bigger machines than some of the MySQL machines, but it was just such a huge change in how that data was computed that it, it kind of 
no one, no one on the database side of the house could believe that it was even possible. So you can do some pretty amazing things. That relied on a couple of um, things that we did that weren't in Lucene, that kind of didn't make it into Lucene for another couple of years to do with distributed um, filters and, and distributed facets. But it, you know, it was basically, we had the technology, we could do it, we did it, and it saved massive amounts of both pain and money. Um, and it made this, the, our users incredibly happy because bloggers are a little narcissistic. They liked to know how popular they were and they liked to know immediately after posting something. They wanted to know who's linking to my blog, right? Um, Twitter has taken that to a whole new level, but in these days, Twitter didn't exist. There were only blogs and people really cared. Like we got complaints periodically when our indexing cycle backed up and we were five minutes between updates, right? People were really upset. They wanted to see their blog posts in the results immediately. So same question from Hal, except this time it was bigger. It was give me a million results. Same answer. Can't do it. Sorry. Go away. Um, I had uh, I had an image of Hal for this one, but anyway, sorry, Dave, can't do that. Um, troubleshooting, monitoring, analytics. Because we had a spread bus, and who here has used spread? Anyone? Ivan from Logly. Um, <laughs> So spread is just a data bus. You can write to it, you can consume from it. It's dirt simple, but it's, it's incredibly reliable. Because we had it, what we did with a lot of the TMA stuff was we just um, shoved the monitoring data, the instrumentation, straight onto spread. And then we had consumers that aggregated, graphed, did all of that nice stuff with that data. So we had real-time monitoring of what was going on on I think um, when I left Technorati, there were probably about 150 machines in the search cluster. Um, I think it got up to, I don't know, about four or 500. But using spread, we had real-time um, insight into everything that was happening on the machines. Um, and we had performance data on search latencies, all of that kind of stuff. Um, <coughs> which was really, really nice. Um, but if something went wrong, um, if we lost a box, or if there was something in the monitoring that was telling us that something was weird and we hadn't seen it before, we still had to log on through the box and look at the logs. So, you know, troubleshooting was still kind of a pain in the ass. Um, monitoring was nice, analytics was nice, but troubleshooting was still just annoying. Um, and, you know, so we were kind of two steps forward, one step still stuck in the mud. Um, next. Scout was um, a similar kind of thing to Technorati. It was social media monitoring for marketers. Um, so blogs, tweets by then, um, all sorts of stuff. Any, any social media you can think of, we ingested, indexed, and, and kind of did it in, in this case, I think we got, I don't know, 30 seconds or so from, from when it happened. Um, we, we spent a little less time doing surgery on Lucene here. Um, the stuff that I talked about in Lucene where we were doing distributed faceting and filtering and yada, 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 um, at Technorati we didn't need to do because Lucene had kind of caught up. So there was already some interesting stuff going on and th there was already um, movement in that stuff because everyone else wanted to do it as well, right? And one of the problems of working at Technorati was we couldn't open source any of it because it was basically the secret source. Um, if we had released it, anyone could have done what we had done. So we kind of had to sit on it, which was kind of annoying, but very anti-open source. Um, but there you go. Um, by the time I was at Scout, some of that stuff had kind of been done by other people and worked well enough for us just to use. One of the... Um, things that came along with this is a thing called external file field. If anyone has used Lucene um, and not used this, um, I don't blame you. 
it's incredibly powerful, but also incredibly painful. So because of the way Lucene manages like the internals of the indexes, but what it did do was it gave absolutely real time updates to um, values that you wanted to use for relevance. So again, it's like an advancement in, in just the core Lucene underpinnings that let you do things that you couldn't have done before. Um, one of the one of the reasons that Lucene is very fast is it uses a kind of a log format um, index structure. So things are written but never changed. Um, <clears throat> and what that means is if you want to update something, you have to re-index it and go find the old one and delete it if you don't care if you care about duplicates. So the fact that there was now a way to kind of change some values in your documents without having to re-index the whole document was a huge step forward. And that's what the external file field gave us. One of the other things that came out of Scout was, um, and this is not meant as a slam on people in marketing, um, was that we focused really hard on the UI. We made it beautiful and we made it um, surface all of the stuff that Lucene could give us in ways that was incredibly easy to use. And everyone loved it. Even when it was incomplete, even when it didn't give them everything they wanted. It gave it. It gave enough, and it gave it in a way that was so easy to use and so beautiful, basically, that um, they kind of would overlook the fact that, you know, we didn't nest our, for example, our sentiment analysis wasn't necessarily the best, which kind of proved that. Um, if you do a really good job of visualization, people will forgive you a whole multitude of sins. Um, the question from hell wasn't so common here. And one of the reasons was that by now, um, Lucene had all of this, um, all of the internals to deal with. Um, well, it had more of the internals were dealing with um, the kinds of simple analytics that people wanted a million results for out of the search engine. So we could do counts on um, a lot more things. We could do kind of kind of do range searches on field values. It was ugly and expensive and slow, but we could do it. Um, so, you know, and that, that was a big insight too. It's if you can do that an analytics inside your engine, people stop asking you to get stuff out of it, right? Makes perfect sense. Um, troubleshooting monitoring analytics here, we had a spread bus, everything was good. Um, so, question from hell is incredibly frustrating, but Lucene is kind of getting there so that we um, don't get asked it so much. Um, search is getting really, really, really good. Like the, the guys that were working on Lucene um, at this point and Solar were doing a spectacular job and it was just getting better and better very, very fast. The last two points are really important. Logging is just data. So, um, if you spend, like I had by this point, you know, what is that, 10 years basically, dealing with search systems, you adopt a whole bunch of practices when you're logging um, so that you can write simple scripts to pull out important metrics from those logs, right? If you do a good job, then if you do a good job of what you log, then interpreting it is really easy. So incredibly important point here is that while logs can be messy, they're only messy because you make them that way or someone else did, right? If you spend the time and think about what you're logging, you can actually log just as data. So for example, we support JSON. It's just you log JSON, you get JSON, right? And you can do whatever you want with JSON. It's just data. So you don't have to be constrained by the fact that logs have traditionally been ugly. Um, and logging is just a transport. So I've mentioned spread. I've mentioned SSHing onto machines. Syslog is just a transport. REST interfaces are like by 2009, they're all over the place. So we have you know a couple of mechanisms that just let you um, get the data wherever you want it really easily. So those two things are incredibly important too. So Logly. When I started Logly, Solar Cloud was just over the horizon. 
um, three years later it showed up. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> in the interim, we wrote a whole lot of plugins for Solar that let us do a whole bunch of interesting things. The most important of which probably is um, that we spent a lot of time dealing with time sharding of indexes. We had a streaming data from Syslog and from REST, and we spent a lot of time figuring out how to index that efficiently and deal with um, all of the complexity that comes from that. Because at this point, Lucene required um, that you commit your data. Um, the generation one version of Logly was committing every 15 seconds. Because every commit um, generates a bunch of files on the file system, we couldn't keep committing to the same index over and over and over again, so we ended up going with five minute indexes, which then gets shuffled off and merged and yada, yada, yada. So lots of complexity there because of a, because of a constraint of Lucene that we worked around, um, but I wouldn't want to do it again. Um, Zero MQ was how we got the data into from the REST and syslog receivers into, um, <coughs> excuse me, into Solar. That was a lot of fun. Zero MQ is an awesome product, um, but again, I wouldn't do it again. Um, and we were, I think we were pretty early on. We wanted to accept JSON data. JSON, the format, I don't really care about. The fact is it's semi-structured, text-based, dirt simple to generate. Um, and that was a huge win for us because it meant our customers could just send us the data that they wanted to work with um, and we could allow them to do that. Um, this is kind of where everything comes together. So we've got real-time feed, we've got real-time streaming of logs into a system that deals with semi-structured data well and can do analytics and can do a whole bunch of other um, interesting things. So everything kind of came from one place. Um, and I realize New Relic might shoot me for this, but you know, you can do it. You can do it all with logs. Um, and during this time, numeric support in, in Lucene got really good, really, really good. We switched to Elasticsearch. We started um, end of last year and released it two months ago, a month, I don't know, <laughs> not too long ago. Um, and we picked up another couple of interesting technologies here. So Kafka is what we use for the streaming part. It's a beautiful, reliable um, queuing system. We, we're using it for that. Um, NRT is near real time which is part of Elasticsearch. Um, we parse the logs so that you can, ex even from the really, the ugliest stuff you've got, we can try and pull something useful. Um, we got a whole bunch of performance improvements and we, it let us focus on our product and not the plumbing. So we spent a ton of time making it easy for you to, to look at your data in ways that if you're using New Relic, you're probably already familiar with, but with a full-blown search engine under the covers. So you can do a lot more slicing and dicing. You can do a lot more. You can find kind of more interesting data. Um, so are we there yet? Uh, maybe. Let's see. It's still hard to deal with billions of log events a day. Um, performance is still hard. Um, if you've got unlimited money, performance is less hard but not everyone has unlimited amounts of money. Um, distributed systems are still complicated. They're still unreliable. And when you're dealing with like um, a lot of our customers, a lot of New Relic customers, when you're dealing with hundreds of machines, you definitely don't want to do this yourself, right? You want a lot of automation in place to make sure that these things just work. So this is kind of the, the crux of all of that build up. And it is that search is actually an analysis engine. And uh, Elasticsearch, for example, have changed some of their marketing collateral to start talking about analytics and not just search. It really is. It's a streaming data engine. So anything that you can get into a search engine, you can stream through um, that engine and do analytics on. 
um, <clears throat> which in, for example, in Elasticsearch's case, they have scripts that you can run on each event and you can do computation on the data that's in the event. Um, Lucene, it's coming to Lucene soon. So search really, if you, if you still think search is just find me three good things, use relevance to do that, and thank you very much, then you're missing you know, the key thing about search, which is it's just a streaming data engine. You can use it um, like a micro map reduce cluster. Um, if you have your data distributed across you know, 400 machines, you can use the query to filter, and you can use scripts to do the analytics, do the map. Right? Um, I've already kind of talked about logs, and logging is just a real-time data stream. There's, like, that should be pretty obvious. If you can send, if you can serialize something, it's just data. So you shouldn't be thinking of logs as just data. One of the one of the key things here, though, is, and you know, we see this as we hire people, is um, people will say, oh, I don't want all that stuff in my logs because then I won't be able to read them. And you shouldn't be thinking of logs as being read by humans. Like there are really good tools out there, like us, that let you use them as data, and you should do that. Um, it's very tempting to think my logs are going to be read by a human, and therefore it doesn't matter what I put in them, but it's actually completely wrong. And the last bit is um, where everyone is going to kill me. There are some problems where search is all you need. You don't need databases. You don't need anything but search to solve these problems. And if your problem fits, you can use it. Um, both Elasticsearch and Solar are working really, really hard to make sure that your data is as safe in a search system as it is in any other database. So have a hard think about that one, because that one, I think, is going to be really interesting. Um, this is just blue sky stuff. Search is going to continue to improve. Um, the fact that both Elasticsearch and Solar are competing is good for both of them and for Lucene itself. There's a whole bunch of stuff that's coming into Lucene um, from both sides. So it's getting better. Um, and like I said, it's getting close to being a real live data store that you can just use and forget about. Um, and problems are continuing to evolve. So things get harder and harder as time goes by. And search is just kind of one way of solving those problems. Um, this is even more blue sky. Everything interesting is real time, time series data. Everything interesting to me. So um, maybe that's a bias. Um, the inner loop is literally a stream engine. Predictive analytics are going to be everywhere. Um, and the network effect is going to become increasingly important. So for us, that what that means is if we have 100 customers using Python, logging from Python, we can tell them, hey, you're using the wrong version of Python because people who use version X don't get this exception. That kind of stuff is going to kick in and be incredibly useful. To finish up, someone won a ticket to reInvent. Who is that, Dave? <laughs> How many of you guys had, guys and gals, uh, enjoyed the chocolate in the bag? Yeah. Great, thank you. Um, we had a contest associated with that. We had uh, a ton of entries, and the winner, who will get a free pass to reinvent, is Oscar Stevens from Dark Horse Comment Comics. You don't have to be present to win, but uh, thank you all, and I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, all. I'll be around for a while if you've got any questions or just want to chat. So thank you.